he's continued to be defendant focused. Um, he intervenes in cases in order to make sure that a defendant gets what he believes is the best outcome for them. As a manager, doesn't want any input from his attorneys, and so I just couldn't function any longer in that type of environment. Brooke Jenkins used to work for District Attorney Chesa Boudin, who's just been fired following a recall election in San Francisco. This brought back our agency, which is so important. But while voters, who are overwhelmingly liberal in the city, have woken up to the link between progressivism and rising crime, careerist progressive activists who populate prosecutors' offices, state legislatures, and the U.S. House of Representatives aren't even close. We want a prosecutor who is able to balance the interests of reform with public safety. It's impossible not to be dazed by the pace of violent death in recent days. Aside from the mass casualty events in Buffalo and then Uvalde, a further nine people were killed Memorial Day weekend in Chicago, followed a week later by a nightclub shooting in Chattanooga and then another mass shooting in Philadelphia. Do not come to Philadelphia, you're not safe. We just keep breaking records and it's the wrong kind of records. Much like other progressive prosecutors, Chesa Boudin was associated with a theory known as decriminalization. Its impetus was the belief that too many young black men were ending up in prison, which is true. But its contested solution was to lower the prosecutorial thresholds for prosecution and sentencing. So when, for example, a 17-year-old confesses to two felonies, having run over a mom and her baby, Los Angeles prosecutor George Gascon gives a sentence of five months in a youth probation camp. He keeps doubling down on policies, and then he lies to the media, and he puts out statements that either he's lying or he's incompetent. In the U.S. Senate, politicians on both sides agree they need to do something. And a likely compromise appears to be enhanced background checks and red flag laws, which let authorities seize guns from individuals considered a danger to the public. I've never been part of negotiations as serious as these. There are more Republicans at the table talking about changing our gun laws and investing in mental health than at any time since Sandy Hook. But a distinction is in order, because this Senate effort has little to do with the continuous daily killings in urban city centers. Rather, Washington's current gun regulation effort is directed at the shootings that become national traumas. Incidents, it should be noted, that are nearly always the same. A psychotic young male acting alone disappears into mass murder. You know, under the guise of red flag, uh, they take away due process where they literally can come into your house and take away your gun without you even knowing that there was some kind of proceeding where somebody said, oh, I think that guy might be a threat, so now somebody can go and take away your constitutional right. So let's make some crime control connections. For nearly 20 years, New York City had an interventionist red flag law. It was called Stop, Question, and Frisk. Begun in the 1990s in a city overwhelmed by gang killings, it got guns and their carriers off the street. New York became the world's safest large city. Progressives hated it. When we look at how mass incarceration happened, it was a campaign of political pressure created by conservatives and also conservative Democrats that said, yeah, like, lock them up. And this was not just a racial thing because there were politicians of all races that voted for, you know, the 94 crime bill. In 2013, after repeated lawsuits, a federal judge declared stop and frisk, you guessed it, unconstitutional, and put the police under the supervision of a federal monitor. The situation worsened when Bill de Blasio won his mayoral campaign, in part on a pledge to roll back stop and frisk. We changed the approach, we changed the policy, and numbers are abundantly clear. In the first quarter of 2013, there were nearly 100,000 stops. In the same period for this year, 14,000 stops. Stop and frisk is an intervention. Red flag laws, which some Republicans oppose as a violation of due process, are an intervention. Past some point of social disorder, practical wisdom requires intervention. Someone once said the Constitution is not a suicide pact. The left and right need to find a way to agree on that. Mayor London Breed um, is tasked with uh, appointing his replacement, and as we all know, she is a Democrat. And I do expect her to appoint a progressive prosecutor.